in recent years, I've been making making some different observations relative to what's typically being done and also what we've been doing relative to looking at the gross motor function and development in children uh, relative to what our understanding is of neurodevelopment. And, you know, in recent years I've been modifying what we've been doing and to some degree doing less. Uh, to illustrate this, um, probably the Down syndrome population is is probably kind of the best way to explain this. Uh, what I'm seeing is if we, we, we want to do two things. We want to develop good muscle tone, muscle balance uh, strength. And we want to, if you will, address any abnormal structural issues. And then we want to provide the opportunity for the child to move through a typical normal neurodevelopmental motor sequence, which, which is essentially uh, learning to move the limbs independently, learning to crawl on the stomach, learning to crawl in a cross pattern, learning to get up on the hands and knees, learning to creep, learning to walk, and learning ultimately to walk and run in a cross pattern. And often the challenge is that, the, you know, we and the parents want to see the development of these pieces happen as rapidly as we possibly can. And the tendency is, even for us, to tend to maybe push a little bit too hard. Traditionally, the tendency is, sadly, because the awareness of neurodevelopment is not there, is worse because it tends to push the wrong things. So not only is pushing, it's pushing the wrong things. And pushing the wrong things actually is detrimental to the development of the proper muscle tone, strength, muscle balance, uh, proprioception, coordination of the movements, all the things necessary to actually produce good slash normal development. Uh, you know, for example, often with a Down syndrome child who maybe has low muscle tone, poor strength, uh, therapeutically, they're, the traditional therapist is working on sitting. And, you know, the, the new big thing is <clears throat> we're going to do sitting and such things to develop the core. Uh, you know, I'm, I, I, I got to think all this core stuff came from TV exercise people. Uh, you know, uh, you know, you got to look at a typical child and look at what is happening with them. You know, I don't look at babies who are learning to crawl and say, "Wow, check out those abs." You know, look at that core. You know, in truth, it is learning how to move, and those arms and legs learning how to move, and actually moving, crawling, creeping, that actually develops the trunk, and if you will the core. It's not the other way around. All right. So, you know, it's, it's so easy for, for people to go kind of haywire on this stuff. But what I'm, what I'm seeing again, you know, talking, you know, specifically here about Down syndrome for a while is if I have a child and that child, you will get that child crawling on their stomach. And if it's a homologous crawl, meaning they're <clears throat> pulling both arms to, together, pushing both legs together, we do some things to naturally try to break that up, like we have them crawl over things so that they have to first use one arm and, and then the other arm, one leg and the other leg. Or we get down and we do some assistance to, to get that pattern going. But once we get that cross pattern crawl, the 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 tendency is, okay, the next step is creeping, so we got to work on creeping. Uh, but what I'm realizing is what we need to do to work on creeping is do a whole lot of crawling. So the, the motor program becomes, let's facilitate this child crawling as much as possible. Because once we have that proper pattern, <clears throat> you know, if you think of that child crawling on their stomach, you know, they're extending the arm, they're flexing the arm. They're extending the leg, they're flexing the leg. We're getting muscle balance. We're getting, 
you know, a key word is integrated information. All right, integrated information doesn't get any better the simultaneous movement of your right arm with your left leg and your left arm with your right leg. All that is integrated information. All right, and that is doing a great job of teaching the brain where those pieces are and the relationship of those pieces. And we see if the kids start off with that foundation, that ultimately we end up with gross, good gross motor function. If we don't have that foundation, you know, we, we spend years and years trying to fix glitches that exist because we do not have that foundation. So what, I, what I've, you know, observed more in recent years is we, once we get a function that is correct, as in a good cross pattern crawl, we encourage it, we get as much of that as we can. And what the typical child is going to do then is get up on their hands and knees without any assistance. And then they're going to start rocking without anybody pushing it. And then they're going to start creeping on their hands and knees without anyone pushing it. They're going to develop a cross pattern creep without anyone pushing it. Then they're going to start pulling up when they should. They're going to start cruising when they should. And they're going to start walking when they should and generally walk properly. So actually what I have found is Almost the less intervention, the better. All right. If you will, we don't want to mess with typical and good. We just want to encourage typical and good. And if we do that, the pieces fall in order very, very, very nicely. But then again, you know, as I say, if we have muscle strength issues or tone issues, uh, we need to address those specifically. You know, make sure we have the, the structure going for us. But ultimately, it's doing those typical things that if you look, if you stand back and look at the magic of what that typical development is, it's like, you know, we can't plan it any better. You know, we could not, we cannot create a better sequence of events to integrate the information, develop muscle balance, develop proprioception, and put the whole act together than what just happens normally. So we often look at these periods when we're going through and, and doing this, particularly with the Down syndrome population, you know, that's when we have all this opportunity to push all the cognition. Right? So lots of opportunity to move properly and then build the cognition. Uh, you know, as I was thinking, you know, through this process, <clears throat> I, I recalled uh, something my father had told me when I was a kid. My father was a physiatrist, which is an MD specializing in rehabilitation. And, you know, I, I grew up with, my father had a, you know, was the head of uh, physical medicine departments in a number of hospitals, rehab centers. Uh, he also had a little office in our, in our basement. You know, so I grew up with, as a kid with uh, skeletons in the closet, <clears throat> with all kinds of scary looking things that could make braces and, uh, you know, it kind of looked a little bit like a torture chamber down there. Uh, it didn't help it was in a basement of an old house. Uh, but I remember my father telling me that one of the, the first things that he and his brother did, who was a physical therapist, when they started looking at intervention, they looked at what they were presently doing, which if you will was what they thought was about the best traditional physical therapy that there was. And they did a study and they compared the results of the children they worked with with the results of children who received no therapy. And to their chagrin, they discovered that the children who had no therapy did better than the kids they worked with. And looking at that, you know, they, they, they realized that what was happening was the children who were not receiving formal therapy were pretty much treated like typical kids and permitted to be down on the floor and learn to move. And that so much of the intervention is really not 
fitting to actually what is neurodevelopmentally normal and appropriate. And that it is so easy to, you know, intervene and knock things off. So looking at this neurodevelopmentally, you know, has changed the perspective a bit. You know, we try, if you will, to develop a, a normal movement, a normal pattern of function and have the child do a lot of that in order to push the progression of all the associated pieces. So it's been, a, it's been an interesting, you know, last few years as I've, I've kind of gotten a better and better handle on this. But I think it's very significant because it's very easy to, if you will, do too much intervention. You know, and you know, if you're, if you're going to a therapist Therapist is going to try to do something, you know, uh, not necessarily the right thing, you know. And we've, I've mentioned in other videos that the nature and structure of that is another issue. But, you know, as parents, you know, try to look at your child and look at what those normal steps are and, you know, go through our CDs where we explain that in detail. And what we want to try to do is get the child to those normal functions and then push that, have them do a ton of that to move to the next neurodevelopmental stage. Okay. Different perspective. Thanks.